Hi there, I'm just a cute little ranger. Look at my cool little sword and my awesome gloves that I found. I'm so excited to go monster hunting in the blood aqueducts, let's go. Grr, okay I've had enough of this. The gloves come off. There we go. There we go. Hello, friends, and welcome to my showcase, or whatever you would like to call it, of my Hollow Palm Raider. I just wanted to share with you all the build that I've been absolutely in love with this league. This is a build that's essentially been around since Delirium, but with all of the passive changes, the masteries, and especially a new keystone this league, this build is stronger than it's ever been, and it's extremely off-meta very easy to put together. You can be blasting 40% delirium, double beyond, juiced out of your mind maps. It's not as big as the big, big bow boys, but for five to 20 exalts at the top end, you're doing some pretty good juice. You're making really good currency and you're having an absolute blast destroying tons of monsters and having a good time. Now, this is the follow-up companion video to my previous one that I posted a couple days ago. It is a 16 minute video where I go into pretty good detail about most of the mechanics, why we use Dancing Dervish, how Hollow Palm works, et cetera, et cetera. This is basically a post-mortem or a follow-up or a conclusion after playing this build for about a week where I've taken it. I would say I'm about 90% as far as I wanna take it total. Really the only things that I'm aiming for at this point are double corrupts and like really, really big stuff, but it absolutely is stellar at what it's set out to do. And for a clearing build, it bosses pretty decently, roughly nine to 10 million DPS at current level of investment. And my own personal goal here is to take down the feared with a little hollow palm raider and I think I'm gonna be able to pull it off. So yeah, this is just a companion video to the previous one. Please watch the previous one if you're not familiar with Hollow Palm, if you're not familiar with Trinity, stuff like that, some of the core mechanics. This is not a super beginner-friendly build. It's not hard, and it's not hard to put together or play, but there are some numbers that are a little tricky. You have to make sure you balance them properly, and if you just get one number off, if your strength is lower than your intelligence or anything like that, you could be missing up to 20 or 30% of your damage. So just be very careful and comfortable with balancing those numbers. But if that doesn't scare you off, let's do a quick little overview here, a quick little gameplay, and just talk about why I've been enjoying this build so much. So this is a Hollow Palm Raider. That means that I get flat physical damage. I count as dual wielding when I have nothing in my hands. I have a Dancing Dervish, which when it activates after I hit some monsters, I get Rampage. Sword leaves my hand, I also get Onslaught, so I kind of get some freebie quality of life there. The Cyclone that the sword does actually is linked to all of the gems. The gems don't have to be linked, so the really only important one here that you care about is we have Culling Strike, so the sword that's out that's doing Cyclone, it actually gives us a free high quality of life Culling Strike. So that's really the notable thing here. In addition to that, I have Cyclone, which I use to kind of kick off, get a lot of attacks in there really quickly. That will make it easier and safer to get our Rampage started from a really nice distance. Best in slot for our helmet, Fractal Thoughts, Infernal Blow, Physical Damage Gains is Extra Fire. Most important thing here is 15% increased Dexterity. 
if strength is higher than intelligence, make sure your strength is higher than intelligence. And in fact, I have to allocate beef right now because I've struggled to find a little bit of strength anywhere else. Later on, I do want to unallocate beef, as tasty as it sounds, just so I can save that one passive point. We want a five red, one blue wild wrap. We want an astramentus. We want an elemental weakness on hit ring. We want two rings that have really, really good res. The hardest thing about this build is making sure you balance your res. We really only have three slots on our gear, two rings and our belt, just our jewelry right here to balance our resistances. So you wanna go for as much res as possible on your jewelry when you're crafting it. You're gonna be using deafening essences of sorrow right here. They are your best friend. They give you dexterity. They're very, very cheap right now. You can buy them in bulk for just about four to five chaos. Not bad at all. Buy as many of those things as you can and then craft your gear. Then Garokhan's Flight, just really best in the slot for the boots. Since we aren't crit, we don't care about Elusive Tailwind Onslaught. We just want to get a gigantic chunk of life from our boots. For the flask, I recommend an Anti-Bleed Life Flask, Taste of Hate, Lion's Roar, and Zeri's Promise, and a really nice Quicksilver. I actually have mine specifically rolled for reduced effective curses. And then on top of that, I use Soul of Yugal for reduced effective curse there, giving me very close to 100% reduced effective curses. I don't have to worry about those whatsoever. Really, really nice quality of life. And then we don't care about burning, shocked, or chilled ground because we use these boots. For the major pantheon, recommend Soul of the Brine King, Can't Be Frozen, Reduced Sun and Block Recovery, and Reduced Effective Chill. That's the gear, the flask, the pantheons. What are the gems? As I said before, the sword gems don't really matter. Culling Strike here, Increased AoE and Cyclone, these are really the only ones that matter. I use Enduring Cry, that's kind of my little unique thing I haven't seen anyone else do. I find if I'm running super, super juice maps, getting those Endurance Charges, getting that essentially free Life Flask is really, really nice. Ancestral War Chief, we put this down, gives us more damage. We want to drop this guy right before we're fighting our single target or if we're in a pack of scary monsters, gives us a gigantic chunk of damage. We specifically want... Vol Ancestral War Chief, which you can see gives us a 32% more melee damage multiplier. The regular ones will do 18%. Flame Dash, our little basic mobility, nice to have. Steel Skin, have that on the left click. As you can see, we have very, very few gems. And in fact, when the sword is activated, it's not in our hands. We can't rely on any of those gem sockets. So this is all we got. We have to make sure we very, very specifically use the gem sockets that we care the most about. In the boots, Herald of Ash, Purity, Hatred, our two heralds with our aura and an Enlightened. We basically need a level three Enlightened in our primary damage links, Anomalous Infernal Blow. Anomalous means more debuffs go on the surrounding monsters, which means more chaining explodey. That's what we care about. We want big, big boofs. Trinity, we do fire and cold damage. We want that Trinity, best in slot for our damage damage there. Awaken Melee Fizz, Divergent Melee Splash. Divergent is better than the Awakened, but if you're on a budget, you can use the Awakened. Only one Exalt for level 5 Awakened Melee Splash. Absolutely use that if you're on a budget. Buy the Divergent for about 3 to 4x later on when you have a bit more currency. Awakened Elemental Damage with Attacks. This one is absolutely incredible. Go for the Awakened one. It is worth the price. Number one reason, Elemental Damage cannot be reflected. We can run Reflect Maps. Very, very huge quality of life. That means we can juice our maps more, vol them. We don't care if we get Reflect. And then Fortify, we just get Fortify. It's not the absolute best in slot for pure damage, but getting that 20% less damage from hits is actually really huge as a melee build, being able to be more survivable. So from the last video, the only thing that really changed is I got the right colors of my body armor, put in Trinity support because I didn't have a blue one before, and then I was able to sneak in Fortify. Other than that, my gear is absolutely identical to the last video. I just have better gems, and that's actually where a lot of my investment has come from. Other bigger change that I did here is I snuck in and inspired learning. I did have to take Mind Drinker here, which not really ideal. We would prefer to take some other nodes if we really need that mana. The way that inspired learning works is you need four big allocated notables in the radius to be able to trigger it. Make sure you're careful about that. When you mouse over the inspired learning, make sure you have this little tooltip. You see the one that's moving with my mouse cursor. That will only show up if it's active. So always double check that if you're using a threshold jewel, that will tell you whether the threshold has been met. And then down here, we have a large cluster jewel. I highly recommend these as the three notables that you have. Feed the Fury, this gives us life leech. Fuel the Fight gives us mana leech. And Martial Prowess gives us accuracy, which is very, very important attack damage, and attack speed. So these are really the best in slot jewel. I crafted this one myself, but they're going currently for a couple exalts, so not very expensive. So why is accuracy so important? If you watched the previous video, you know that our life is basically capped. We can't get our life higher than accuracy without losing 40% damage. So we have to make sure that we're always, every time we level up, we change gear, we change passive points, we make sure our life is just a little bit below our accuracy so we get that gigantic 40% damage multiplier. And then the other notable thing is we use Mage Bane. This gives us absolutely super overcap, super, super, super overcap of our spell suppression. 
You don't need more than 100%, but we got it. So we can even run maps that say minus 25% spell suppression, and we still get our full spell suppression. So that's pretty nice. And that's about it for the rundown. You want to get as much dexterity as possible, keep your strength higher than your intelligence, keep your life lower than your accuracy, and always pay attention to those damage numbers. Always mouse over them. You know, unequip your sword, mouse over that damage number, make sure that it looks like what it's supposed to be. Every time you change something on your character, if something feels off, double check that number, double check that everything is kosher and that you're not missing something. It could be something as simple as switching a jewel. You just got a little too much intelligence and then your strength is, is being outstripped by that. You can lose the fractal thoughts damage bonus and boom, you lose a gigantic chunk of your damage. So this is just one of those things. This is not a beginner friendly build. There are numbers and certain variables that you have to pay attention to. But if you're looking to get into an intermediate build and you want to start getting comfortable with stacking and start getting comfortable with things that might need a little bit of balance, this is a great introduction into those style of builds. So if you feel like you're ready for it, I absolutely encourage you to do it. This is easily one of the most fun, fast, and powerful builds I have ever played on this budget. For just three to five exalts, I was already running double beyond maps. And now I'm at about 20 exalts invested and I'm able to do like 170 quant, 40% delirious, two and a half X beyond, really, really juicy maps. Sometimes I die once in a while. This isn't a giga bow build that absolutely decimates everything. It's not any of those omni bow builds that people are playing right now, but it is a little under the radar and it's super, super budget just to get into. So strongly recommend this if you're considering anything like it. All right, and just to keep the video length a little lower, we're gonna run a tier 16 strand that's rolled up to 91% quant. It's got Nemesis, I'm gonna put Beyond on it. I also have a little bit of Baby Beyond here. These nodes are like, I call it like 0.5x Beyond. They're not as strong at all as like Beyond on the map device or when you roll it on a map, but it does give you a nice little bonus there. And then since we have Beyond here, it's like 1.5x Beyond. So let's just pop into this map, show the gameplay a little bit as well. So what is the play style here? So I have steel skin on left click. I periodically enduring cry. I use my cyclone to hit the monsters quickly, kick off that rampage, get the dervish out of my hands, and then I just start blasting. So go up, cyclone. As soon as we see the rampage go, and then we're just ripping, just going forward, periodically just tapping my infernal blow. What I actually do is I will hold Q down and I will just kind of periodically left click a little bit. That's what I'm doing right now. Um, in addition to this, you'll see that I'm getting headhunter buffs. That's because I have the one exalt, Inspired Learning. It's a cheap little baby headhunter. Absolutely recommend grabbing that. If you've never used an Inspired Learning before, it's a great like entry level feel into getting into uh, into like what the headhunter gameplay is like. In addition to that, you'll notice that I obviously have the shrine nodes and I'm getting a lot of power out of those shrines. They're a tool that's in the game right now, right? Like since we are getting shrines on every single map right now and we can actually force it with domination on the map device, that's a great way to just say, hey, I want to feel like I have a headhunter all the time. I can guarantee that on the map for just three chaos per map. You don't have to, you know, with between inspired learning and the shrine nodes, we can kind of get that feeling of juicing our maps and being very, very powerful without investing that hundred exalts into your headhunter. So yeah. This build absolutely excels at just blowing up the entire screen, chaining those explosions, and just feeling spectacular at it. Push that quantity as high as possible, kill a ton of monsters. This has really just been one of the most fun builds I've ever played, especially since I didn't have to stress out, like really, really stress out putting it together, handcrafting everything, really, really, really cheap uniques just to buy and put it together. Just a few exalts, easy peasy. Now. We do enough damage here. We do absolutely enough damage to kill T16 map bosses. I never gem swap for it, but if we're gonna fight big boy bosses, we do gem swap for Ice Crash. Ice Crash, the key here is it has 356% effectiveness of added damage. That means all of that flat damage that we get from Hollow Palm gets 3.5x multiplier on it, right? So that's gigantic for the damage. Conversely, Infernal Blow, only a 1.69% multiplier on there. So that's just not gonna be nearly as good for absolutely scaling our, our big damage, right? So if we take off the sword, you know, take a look at the uh, the Infernal Blow here, you'll see 904,000, and then you see 1.3 million. <laughs> it's just that much more. And it's actually even better because we drop Trinity here, we use Conk Effect, and then we put Multi Strike in here as well. And then it goes up to 2.1 million paper DPS on the Ice Crash. It hits like an absolute truck. Now. It doesn't feel as good for map clear. We don't have blast freeze. We don't, we're non crits. We're actually not chilling or freezing or anything at all. We're not igniting. We're actually not doing any of those elemental effects, but it just hits like a truck. We're just doing pure damage. This is the way to go for a single target. 
So we drop our totem, pop our flasks, punch the map bosses down. Just that easy, portal up, and we get out of there. My only goal here is to show something cool off that I like, and if you think it's cool, maybe you should give it a shot. So anyway, thank you all for watching, appreciate it very much, and I'll see you all next time, goodbye.